we're, most of us in this room are comfortable with getting rid of God. Are we comfortable with getting rid of the soul? Are we comfortable of see, with seeing ourselves as fully natural, physical, determined creatures? If we are, then all these consequences, all these implications are ours for the having, the compassion, the control, the sense of connection. If you hold on to the self and medical, metaphysical free will, Cartesian, contra-causal, libertarian free will, that disconnects you from nature. You're partly, you're still holding on to something supernatural. So the naturalism I'm proposing as the next step for humanists, as the next step for free thinkers, is this extended, thoroughgoing, no holes barred, scientifically based naturalism that's being revealed to us as we speak by science in this day and age that we're lucky to witness. Now, naturalism isn't the only route to a moral, compassionate engagement with the world. I don't want to make that claim. Religionists can be moral, wonderful people. <laughs> Many are my friends. So we have to join forces with them to create the world we want. But what I am suggesting is that a, a thoroughgoing scientific view of ourselves that ends up in naturalism is at the heart of secular humanism, and we should take it seriously, extend it, use it and see its full implications. In doing that, I think, is, is the way forward for humanists, for free thinkers. And I think what I want to suggest is that we think of ourselves as naturalists. Use that word explicitly, deliberately, naturalists as opposed to supernaturalists. And think about naturalism as sort of the, the heart of what brings us together in, the, in these many different groups across the country, however you call yourself. I think ultimately we're all naturalists and what I'm suggesting is to take this naturalism all the way, see its implications and work from there, maybe well into the 25th century. So that's it and I'll take some questions. Aren't you just replacing uh, terminology here? I mean, when I listen to you, it sound, you sound very hopeful. <clears throat> you sound very futuristic and oriented towards a um, rational understanding of science. But aren't we just... Uh, is, it, is it possible that we don't know and these isms, like naturalism or spiritualism, are really the barrier that keeps us from fully understanding what I think it is that you're talking about? Okay, <clears throat> well, all I'm suggesting in using the word naturalism is that we're naming the worldview that we arrive at if we use the method I think that we both agree is the method of determining what really exists, the empirical evidence-based method. So I'm not setting up an ism that's opposed to any other ism, I'm simply naming what I think needs to be named. And I'm, it has a historical, philosophical tradition that was called naturalism. It still is called naturalism in philosophical circles. So I don't think to call something an, an ism is necessarily a barrier as long as we make explicit what we're talking about and don't get hung up in being defensive about territory. Uh, so I don't mean to exclude any, anybody in the humanist or free thought or any other community. Uh, what I'm rather, I'm, what I'm suggesting is that they're essentially naturalistic at their, their heart, and I'm simply naming that, that philosophical heart. But I, I, I do take your worry about getting attached to an ism. Fair, fair enough. But on the other hand, it's important to have a name, uh, and I think this name works. It's got a, tr a tradition, it's, got a, it's intellectually honest, and it, it's descriptive because it says, yeah, uh, we're fully part of nature, and, uh, and as, as I've described it, it's, it's, about, it's based in science, and I think most of us can get on board about that. Yeah? Do you believe in extrasensory perception? Or can you explain it? <clears throat> well, first of all, there are two questions. Is, does it, does extrasensory perception exist? That's the first, first question. Do I believe in it? That's what it, you're asking me. Do I believe it exists? And I would say no, because I haven't seen either the consistent evidence and equally importantly, I haven't seen any proposal of a mechanism 
or uh, the way it's supposed to work. And science not only needs evidence, consistent studies that show a correlation between two, two things, which, you know, there's some faint correlations at the 0.02 level, or no, point, less than 0.05, not barely significant on some studies. So maybe if, if there is a significant correlation, you still need to, to come up with some kind of mechanism, and there's none proposed for extrasensory perception. Because if it were proposed, what would that do? It would draw it into mainstream science. And that's precisely what people who like extra, extrasensory perception and the paranormal want. They don't want to be drawn into mainstream science. So therefore, they can never propose a mechanism that can be tested. I have a question. <clears throat> if we say we are people of science, don't we have to learn to become comfortable with not having answers, but having questions. Ah, wonderful. Yes, uh, uh, amen to that. Uh, we have to find another word for that, too. <laughs> but yes, the we, the, go, go ahead. You talked about being having an unscripted drama or unfolding cosmos, and don't we have to think rather than linear in thinking that we have this question and we have to have this answer? Like the Greeks and the Romans, they felt they had to have the answer for why lightning struck, so they gave the power to God because they couldn't measure, you know, what was happening with the lightning. So they kind of gave it up for a while to some supernatural being, and I think that's how that all started. But if we say we are people of science, we have to be comfortable with not having the answers, and we have to know that we may not be fully determined, because our experiences, if we're our genes and our experiences, our experiences are continually happening. Right. We only are at that moment in time and space, that creature. Fair enough. I think your points are well taken. We can't be certain, ultimately certain, about the fact that we're completely determined. And I think I, I tried to head off that objection earlier. I said that the truth of determinism is not, not the issue here. Uh, it could turn out that some of our behavior is indeterministic. Let's, let's say science discovers that there's some, something in the brain that is completely random. It's a random number generator planted in the brain somehow that, that has an effect on behavior. Suppose that's the case. Science discovers that it's true. Then our view of ourselves will have to incorporate that new bit of knowledge. And you're absolutely right. We don't necessarily, we can't stand firmly on the facts and say that this knowledge will never change. It's very likely, I however would suggest, that we are fully caused determined creatures given what we know now. There's no reason to think, there's no evidence to suggest that we're not fully caused, fully determined in our behavior. You and I studied nine planets, you know, in science when we were students. We know the cosmos is much greater than that now. So it's only the truth or the fact at that particular time and space. Right, but the method of knowing about the truth is in, it stays, as, the method is what we agree on. Yeah, the, sci the science is a method of, expl of explanation. It has canons of and criteria of explanation which are not completely worked out but fairly well worked out and it's sticking to those methods that keeps us on the straight and narrow so to speak so it's not that the facts the, the the knowledge might change but the methods is a constant and I think that's what we can certainly agree on um, you said at one point um, when you were referring to criminals that if you were put in their shoes then you would do the same thing and I think you we're loosely referring to putting their shoes because most people think that that means if I were literally in their place. But earlier you said something about if you were dealt their hand, which then you referred to as if you were given their genes. Yes. Meaning you really, if you were given their genes and you were raised the way yes. they were and you were in that situation. Precisely. Okay. Yeah. And that, in that case, I would have been them as you put it. Right. Thanks for clarifying that. 